V.V., consciousness to me is a critical factor in understanding reality. Some people say it's irrelevant, it's an epiphenomenon. Some people say it's fundamental. You are a quantum physicist, you come from a Hindu background. I come to you from both perspectives to get a sense of what consciousness may be. Well, to begin with, I'd like to say that the fundamental difference between the religious and scientific perspective is that in religion, consciousness is primary. In science, or from the scientific perspective, it is merely a glitch in the history of the cosmos, <laughs> something that happened, uh, a, a kind of emergence from this very complex thing we call the brain. However, if we reflect a little on the role of consciousness, not only in the universe but in science itself, it is really amazing. For billions of years, this universe existed all by itself with no consciousness in it, as science would have us uh, accept, uh, for legitimate reasons from the scientific perspective. But as a result of consciousness, so many things have been added to the universe. It is not that uh, consciousness uh, is simply is a phenomenon like the emergence of a star or a planet or an asteroid. When we think of uh, the beauty of the universe, the splendor of the universe, all the color and, and uh, charisma, as it were, that we discover in the universe are because of consciousness. Not simple, the, the complex brain, no doubt, is what enables us to discover the splendor of the sunset or uh, the beauty in the butterfly and so on. But, but what about the ideas of truth and beauty and even the apprehension of the laws of nature these are, uh, these have come about, as it were, as a result of consciousness. But some scientists would say, who are physicalists, that consciousness is just a derived property and is not fundamental at all. The question is not whether it is fundamental, but whether it adds to the universe. It is like saying that a piece of paper and uh, a poem written on it. The poem is not fundamental, one might say, because the paper was there and there's just some ink which flowed. But as a result of the, what was written, we discover something that was not there before, namely a meaning in the words. So it seems to me that w without belittling the scientific worldview that consciousness arose as a result of complex biochemistry, the fact remains that consciousness had, has added new dimensions to the universe. And even in the physical universe, there are things that could never have happened without consciousness. Let me give an example. Nuclear fusion is something that as far as we know, has occurred only in the core of stars. Nowhere other than in the core of stars has there been nuclear vision, nuclear fusion, until consciousness arose on the planet Earth. And when we talk about nuclear, uh, the hydrogen bomb, it is the very first time nuclear fusion occurred somewhere that is not in the core of stars. This is the result of conscious reflection on the nature of matter. Hopefully we can turn that into uh, a large energy supply because a hydrogen bomb is not, not the best example of consciousness well, I'd like to use. Well, it is, uh, it, it is from a scientific perspective, I'm simply referring to a phenomenon that happened to be there. You've uh, talked about consciousness on a, a cosmic canvas. Uh, is that artistic metaphor or do you mean something deeper than that? That is the Hindu vision. Uh. From the Hindu perspective, consciousness, such as you and I experience, is a reflection of something much grander. Consciousness from the Hindu perspective is the result of entities in the universe that in the course of their evolution became aware 
of their cosmic connection. So if you were to consider as the Hindu sages looked at it, you know, there is a very important uh, aphorism in the Hindu tradition which says, thou art that. That means you are the totality. Now this recognition simply makes us aware that just as modern astrophysics has revealed that our physical bodies are from atoms which were synthesized in the core of supernovas and therefore, as Carl Sagan, I think, put it, we are stardust. That statement is valid for our physical bodies. And from the Hindu perspective, it is equally a fact that our consciousness is cosmic dust. So that is a picture or that is a vision. So you have a parallelism in a sense. Absolutely. And also it, uh, it distinguishes, and this may not be in accordance with the scientific framework, but if we are to reflect on what the Hindu thinkers have said about it, they have said that there is this difference between the material aspect, our physical bodies, and the consciousness that we all experience. Now I want to ask you as a quantum physicist what your understanding of consciousness is because some would say that purely from a scientific point of view, nothing to do with religion, that consciousness is a critical factor in, in quantum physics. Others would say it's more metaphor of a way of understanding it. The idea of associating consciousness or regarding it as an emergent property and so on, and relating it to quantum physics, arose, understandably, since uh, as a result of not simply the development of quantum physics in the 1920s, but Heisenberg's famous principle. Heisenberg's, uh, what is sometimes called the Heisenberg microscope, says that if we make any measurement, if we try to do, to observe anything in the microcosm in the world of atoms and electrons and protons, then inevitably we disturb the system. And therefore, our understanding or our knowledge of quantum systems becomes a matter of our own consciousness of it. And this idea, which I think is one of the most profound discoveries of quantum physics, has sometimes been extrapolated way beyond its scientific justification as I see it. So, uh, like the great uh, physicist Wheeler said that we live in a participatory universe by which he meant that we are essentially participating in what is happening and there can be no physics without that participation. Now to me, interesting as this concept is, could be applied to classical physics also. There can be no physics without the interaction of the human mind or consciousness with the physical world. Otherwise, it will all be like encyclopedias <laughs> in the bottom of a sea, I, uh, nobody to read and it makes no difference. And all the laws of nature which are uh, keeping the world go the way it does would be somewhat like a blind man walking through the wilderness and that not missing one step along the course charted by the mathematical laws mm. of nature. And that is where the Hindu idea uh, comes in, namely that there is perhaps some kind of a cosmic consciousness which determines or which is aware of the whole universe. So awareness is what it's. So how do you summarize your view? Quantum physicist, brought up in the Hindu tradition, do you see consciousness as something that is fundamental to understanding reality? Uh, of course, I do when it comes to a question of the way you pose it, namely that without consciousness, there is no question of understanding the reality. Mm -hmm. it, is a, it, is, it is a sine qua non as far as science is concerned. However, as to whether we can understand all the complexities and the sources of consciousness in terms of 
neurotransmitters and uh, neurons and whatnot. I have, I am personally not convinced that science has been able to do that yet. Like I don't think uh, many, although there are books to the effect that consciousness has been explained, uh, maybe to the satisfaction of the author, but I'm not sure that uh, people would accept it has been explained. I will admit at the same time that the visions of the the metaphors in my own tradition are very beautiful on the one hand, but I'm not sure that they offer an explanation either. They offer very interesting and insightful theories about the nature of consciousness. So I leave this as uh, one of the grand mysteries which uh, maybe someday future generations will solve, but not yet for me.